going to start with my first question to Rati, which is really around uh, big philanthropy. Um, so in big philanthropy, um, just to define that a little better, individuals who pledge large sums of money uh, in order to uh, look at social and environmental issues. Um, however, I think the question here is more around the fact that if one is a philanthropist with smaller means or smaller budgets, then how can one actually create impact? Because I think at the end of the day, one always sometimes feels a little constrained that do I have enough resources to actually make that impact? And would love to hear a little bit about your thoughts on that, Rati. So uh, thank you, Soumya, very much for having Ria and me here with you today. It's um, a pleasure as always to chat with you. Um, I think when I first did, started my own philanthropic journey, uh, it was disconcerting or a little frightening to always read about very, very large givers who both international and in our own country. And um, it made me somewhere believe that there is really a need for an ecosystem of a variety variety of givers. We need the large ones, we need the large foundations, but we also need a thoughtful group of smaller givers. And the reason I say this is because with my own experience, I find that um, uh, you can make an impact and you can make a difference and have more thoughtful giving, even if you are a smaller or a medium-sized giver. Um, could I go on and tell you a yes, little bit please. more on that? Of course, please okay. do. Please. Um, I think that many have asked, you know, so how do you begin your journey? How would I do this? And there's also some amount of uh, apprehension around how would I really make an impact is also around the credibility of organizations. So I think how to do this is... I think there are a myriad of causes in our country that move one. It could be any cause, education, health, senior, water management, something even in your local community or in your, lo in your city or town. Um, I think today there's a wealth of data available. So the issue of credibility or not being, not being able to find out more about organizations has really dissipated. Uh, there are also some fine organizations that have put together data around thematic thematic giving. So if you're more interested in health or in education or, or, or adolescent girls, there are a lot, there's a lot of really good robust data out there. Um, I think there's then a need to sort of zero in on one or two organizations or one theme that you particularly want to give to. And uh, I would only urge any first time giver to really have a more, uh, you know, longer term giving. It's one thing to give just once or, uh, you know, and then move away, but that really will not have the impact, nor will you be able to understand really impact. Uh, if you just give one time. And finally, I personally am a great believer in the power of collaboration, especially if you're a smaller and medium-sized giver. We have had uh, a great impact in our own city of Pune and elsewhere by being part of uh, collaboratives. So I yeah. think I'll stop there. <laughs> No, and uh, I think two, two, one, two wonderful points there around uh, one is just that to have the um, impact of giving longer and not just one time, but have it more sustained uh, uh, and, and, and certainly in terms of the power of collaboration, uh, which I think is something that we would hope to kind of build on. Mm -hmm.